you know, as it relates to Lord of the Rings, when we see these archetypes on display, even uh, the masculine and feminine, those are symbols, right? Those are those are not just um, arbitrary uh, accidents uh, attributed to characters. Like, it's just an accident that Aragorn is male. We can just make him female, and he would, you know, act the same way. No, no, no. Like, good fantasy understands its archetypes and understands the symbols. And this is why I think the Fellowship is all male. Yes, the females are somewhat in the background, but they're actually fulfilling the original feminine archetype slash symbol. By, like, Galadriel is supposed to be this, uh, you know, uh, archetype of beauty. She kind of inspires the Fellowship to continue. Same thing with um, Rosie Cotton, right? Sam's uh, wife. Right. He is, uh, she is um, almost like a sub- Galadriel, in the sense that that's what motivates Sam mm-hmm. to, you know, endure yeah. uh, his suffering. It's his Beatrice. You know, it's his Beatrice, in a sense. And and when he's on the slopes of Mount Doom telling Frodo, remember the Shire, Sam, I'm sure, has in mind uh, Rosie Cotton, right? Yeah. And, and so that's like playing with the original archetypes and symbols of feminine and masculine really well. And it's not to say one is better than the other. Yes, the male, you know, the, the, the masculine archetype goes out and... Um, pierces right there's a sense of that adventure but that's no less important than the woman who actually inspires right it it almost it makes the male characters and archetypes and symbols uh it it gives them reason to go out right Right. if there was no feminine beauty if there was no nature Mm -hmm. then what's the point of saving the world (laughs) right you would say that like the masculine is the image and then the feminine is the frame Yes, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying yeah. it's like you yeah. ne- like you can't forget yeah. that that there's a whole right. thing that there's there's a thing that encompasses the whole thing. Yeah. It, it fills the house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I think the new Gladriel was supposed to be a little bit more interesting, you know, the warrior type again, and it kind of masculinized in that way. And they were hoping that because now she can take down a troll by herself, that's more interesting. She's scaling uh, right. the side of a of a cliff, that's more interesting. She leads the troop of. I think mostly, you know, male elves into uh, into darkness mm-hmm. in, in pursuit of Sauron. That's interesting, and that's powerful. But sticking at least with just the movies, when they first encounter, when the Fellowship first encounters her, she is hard to look at. Yeah, yeah. Like all of the the Fellowship is almost scared. Yeah, of her, mm-hmm. and she doesn't have a sword. She has no power in a you know a traditional masculine sense she's just it's just her presence is so much that boromir doesn't even look at her like yeah. almost all of the fellowship is like spying at her out of the corner of their eye yeah because she's such a powerful figure to behold yeah but in the feminine sense and it means she's so intuitive that she reads their minds she right. doesn't even just get a sense about them she can actually like reach into their mm-hmm. minds um and each one of them sees a different almost in a different collateral, you know, Boromir's afraid, um, Frodo sort of in awe, um, Aragorn bows his head. Yeah. Gimli falls yeah. in love. Yeah, Gimli falls in yeah. love. Yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, uh, perhaps Sam is looking at her and thinking of Rosie. You know, it's, yeah. it's she doesn't even need to lift a sword, and that's the power of the feminine. And is it beauty. never? yeah, exactly. It never lifts a sword. Exactly. It just, like, exists. Uh, you know, I, I think of all the times Peterson's talked about, you know, the feminine as the judge. And, you know, how men are f- so fearful of women. Mm-hmm. And it's true. And it's not yeah. because of any sort of physicality. It's because just their mere presence is judging them. And that's, yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what Dostoevsky's phrase, beauty will save the world, means. Is that just by beauty's presence, and it's, you know, that's personified in the archetype of the feminine, that is enough to change the hearts of men. And if that changes the hearts of men and men are like what enacts change in the world, you know, archetypally speaking, then behind that, like you said earlier from the, um, you know, uh, my big fat Greek wedding, uh-huh. you know, the woman is the neck, right? Yeah. There's some truth to that. Um, that like, yes, they're not seen in, in the shadows uh, symbolically, but that doesn't mean that they're any, again, less important or not actually active in a sense, right?